Hello, my Zentangle friends. This is Barbara Langston, CZT, Certified Zentangle Teacher. Welcome to Not Perfect Zen and Day 25 of the Inktober Tangles for 2021. I'm going to be using a Micron 01, a graphite pencil, and a blending stump for today. And today's pattern is an ink, I'm sorry, is a Zentangle original. It is a grid pattern and it's also, to me, it's a fragment. Okay, and a fragment just means that it's a pattern in this one square that can be moved around, switched within your grid, like down here. I changed it so that they all met here. On this one, I changed it so that the corner with the lines was pointing to the outside and it really totally changes the way it looks. So it's an easy pattern and I think you'll enjoy it. And I'm gonna show you First, the way that uh, the step out tells you to make the pattern. Now, I've already put down a few of these squares. And <laughs> I actually started to do this uh, and started the recording and got confused because um, this way of doing it to me is not the easy way. But I'm going to show you that they have you put down these squares and fill them in. Okay. And they're a little bit sloppy, but I just want to do this quickly so you see how the step out works. I've already done that here, but you connect each corner. Okay, and then we're gonna turn and connect these corners. And again, this is just a demo of how the step out is done, but the way I like to do it, I think it's a lot easier. Okay, and then they put a line down the center of each of these where your lines connect. And then they do the same thing going across here. Okay, and then this is where you'll start putting your lines. Just on one side. So you would go across, I'm just gonna go across on these same, this row. Okay, and then turn it and do the same thing on the side that touches that one. Okay. All right, so you would just continue to do that on each of these rows. But what I prefer to do, and I'm just gonna do one small square. So divide that, divide that again. 
Okay, now I'm gonna make a diagonal line from corner to corner. Same thing across here. I'm gonna go corner to corner and corner to corner. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here, here. So I've just put a big X in each of those boxes. Now I'm gonna go into the very center and put my little black box, my little black square. So that's where you see those. To me, it's easier to get a nice square grid and it's easier to get this black square centered in here. Okay, so that's how I started this one and this one. Well, and this one too, but you can see that that's just a simple way instead of making these little black boxes first. And then you would, again, put your lines. I like to do all of them on one side and then turn my tile and do them again, all of what I'm going in this same direction. Okay, so there's the basic step out and then a simple way to do it by drawing a grid first. I thought maybe we would just have a little bit of fun with this one and I'm going to do it on a wave, a wavy line. And it's going to get bigger. Then I'm going to come from this direction too and have that one get bigger. Okay, so from here, we're going to start adding our squares. Okay, so I'm going to flip this around and I have not totally planned this out. I'm just going to show you that you don't have to have it in an exact square grid. Okay, so now we're going to go corner to corner. Well, we're putting a diagonal line. I just thought, why not? Let's try putting this 
in something that's not just a plain square grid. This is one of my, what if, what if we do this? Just have fun with it. Okay, I hope I was on the screen. I'm sorry if I wasn't. Okay, so there's our wonky little grid. Since I had that line come out, I'm just going to have it go off the screen here, or off the tile, rather. All right, so now we're just going to go back in here and put our square in the center and fill it in. And again, the nice thing about having your uh, X in the center here of each box is you know that you've found the center of each of these fragments. I don't remember the story of how they came up with this fragment. Sometimes they have some really cool stories. I don't remember on this one. Okay, as my boxes get smaller, my little square in the center gets smaller. I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger. There's an idea you could do that. <laughs> Don't be afraid to play what if. What if I did this? This is how they come up with the variations. I did have a comment on... Uh, one of my videos, uh, this person enjoyed practicing on scrap paper first. And then once they were comfortable with the pattern, then they put it on a good tile. So that's a great idea. That's what I do when I'm practicing these patterns that are new to me. I'll do it on some uh, scrap paper. Then I'll put it in my practice journal so that I can show you. And then I do it on an actual tile like this. That's gonna go into my little disc bound journal for Inktober 2021. All right, so now we have a little square in each of those. And I think I'll go to this side. 
and I try to keep them about the same distance apart, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And you can try to make these match. So you could try to make sure you start your next line right where that one ended, but I don't worry about that. If I'm keep, keeping them about the same distance apart, then there's a good chance that they'll touch like that. But if it doesn't, then it doesn't matter. And within even a, a ribbon like this, if you wanted to start flipping the way that the diagonal lines go, you could do that and see what kind of pattern you come up with. I have not done this with a double ribbon like this before, so we're both getting to see this, see how it turns out. Okay, <laughs> that's interesting. And I think I'll do these two for this bottom one. And then do so well. I don't use grid patterns very often, but this would be an easy one to fit in around other patterns on your tile. So you could add more ribbons along here and keep flipping this around. I did look on the Mosaic app to try to get some ideas, but um, most of them were just basic grids with a few minor changes here and there. But then, like I said, I got to thinking of the fact that this is just 
fragment that can be moved around. And I really liked how it came out uh, as far as this and this. I, I had fun with those. Okay. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. So now comes the shading. And I'm going to add shading where these lines meet. And where they meet here. So I'm going to do that on each of these. Hopefully I won't miss anything. I finished the tile on one of these Inktober tangles and uploaded the video. And first thing my sister did was tell me that I forgot to shade one of the petals. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. It's already uploaded. And then somebody mentioned it in a comment too. I can't tell you how many times I've watched someone do a video and they miss something. I'm like, oh, please see that. Please see that. <laughs> but you're just so intent on trying to get a video done just right that um, sometimes you don't get it right. And that's okay. I'm only human. Okay, so now I've got my blending stump. And I'm going to soften it in each of these. And shading always helps a lot. And I'm trying to make sure I get that on both sides of that line. And as far as playing what if, you know, what if you changed your shading a little bit? that can make a big difference too. If you don't like it, you could erase it. You know, start out with this initial kind of shading, like what I'm doing here, and then maybe add one of these, have that shaded in, which would make it look kind of like cubine. Mm. Let's add. Just a little bit of shading with what's on our 
blending stuff across here and see what, how that changes it. Just a little bit of shading. I think I like that. <clears throat> and I'm not putting any more graphite down because your blending stump will hold a lot of graphite. Okay. So there you go. I will show you. This was my practice for this and see I've tried different ways of shading it. I did shade just one side here and this one I shaded around the square in the center. This one didn't have any shading and this one I flipped the way that I had it. And then I did see that someone had put dots instead of lines on one of their sides. And then this one, I was just still practicing, but just to show you that this is a scrap piece of paper and just play, just have fun. And here's our double ribbon with decks. Um, I hope that helped you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll play around with this, like the fragment here, and see what you can do with it. Again, this is Dex by Zentangle. And uh, thanks again for joining me on day 26 of Inktober Tangles 2021. I appreciate you. I appreciate your comments. I really, really appreciate those have, of you who have sent me support. Um, it's like getting a tip <laughs> in a tip jar at uh, the coffee link that's in my description. Uh, thanks again for joining me. I hope that you'll join me tomorrow and uh, have a good day. Thanks. Bye.